young scientists. Welcome to our science challenge. This week we are going to look at Newton's laws of motion. My name is Melissa and I'm a public educator at Lowell Observatory. So before we get started, we should talk about a little bit of history. Who is Newton? Newton was a physicist and a mathematician way back in the 1600s. Over 300 years ago, he created the theories behind our lovely gravity and also the laws of motion, which we're going to explore over the next two weeks. This science challenge is actually broken into four parts. The first part starts today, then we'll have part two, which is Newton's second law of motion, and then part three, which is Newton's third law of motion. Part four is putting it all together and creating our own rocket ships. So what is Newton's first law of motion? Well, his first law of motion states that every object will remain at rest or in a uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change state by the action of an external force. Basically, this is the definition of inertia. To break this down, that means an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless there is a force acted upon it. For our first demonstration of Newton's first law, we need a cup of water, something sturdy like an index card, and I have a hard boiled egg. What we're going to do is we're going to drop this egg into this cup using its inertia. So an object at rest will stay at rest. So here's my cup of water, here's my object, my barrier, here's my egg. I'm going to now put a force onto this note card and send it into motion outwards by flicking it. The inertia of this egg will actually allow it to stay at rest until gravity pulls it down into the cup. You ready to see it? Here we go. Now that we've gone over what inertia is, an object at rest stays at rest, or an object in motion stays in motion unless a force is acted upon it, we're going to start our experiments that you'll be doing at home right now. Okay, so this is our first experiment we're doing at home. And that's where we're comparing different objects to figure out which one has more inertia and which ones have less inertia. I'm going to flick them and apply force to them to see if there's enough inertia to keep them at rest. So they want to stay at rest. This water bottle is empty. This water bottle is half full, and this water bottle is heavy and full. So we'll start with the empty water bottle, and it fell. Here we go with this one. Ooh, it moved a little bit. And this one, wow, pretty much stayed at rest and just hurt my finger. So now I write down in my field notes that my object, the bottle with the least amount of water in it, is the one with less inertia, and the water bottle with the more water in it has more inertia. Another fun way of doing it is the age old trick where you pull out the tablecloth as quickly as I can. Ready? And. So there's your first experiment to do. Feel free to record your own tablecloth pulling. I used a pillow sheet or a pillow case and it works really, really well. Just make sure all the objects you're using, your parents have given you the A-OK -okay to use so you don't break anything and start comparing objects um, at rest to see which one has more and which one has less inertia. For this experiment, you need a few things. You need a ramp, you need a low height, like I use this notebook. You need a ruler. I have a tape measure. Or you could probably use string and mark that on there. I have two different cans, an empty soda can and a full can of tomatoes. And you'll need your field notes journal to record your findings. So what you want to make sure you do is that you put your ramp same place every time. We're going to switch up what kind of surface we're on. So you want to make sure you put the same layer of text. So I've got this notebook that has a little bit of a ridge line. I put it right on that line. And then I make sure that my uh, 
The tape measure starts right there in before my string. And then make sure it goes taut all the way down if you use that method. And then you start rolling. So I'm going to put this right at the top like I would for every roll I do. And then let it go. Seven inches till it hit the wall. So I'm going to write down in my notebook that the surface we're using is this kind of smooth wood. My empty can went 57 inches. Now I'm going to do my second can, same spot. inches. So my second can I'm going to write down 13 inches. Now I'm going to do the same exact setup on something different. So now I have my setup on a yoga mat. I've got my board, my height, which is still one notebook, and then I'm going to put this at the end. I'm going to move it just a little bit away too just because my can keeps falling in different directions. I'm going to start with the first can. Now that you have that information, rank on your in your science journal which surfaces have the most friction and which ones have the least. It's really interesting to think about this for when you start designing your rocket ship in part four. So now we're going to wrap this whole part one all up in one thing. What you'll need is art supplies, you'll need construction paper, and you want to fold it in half. Cut little slits into here until it looks something more like this. Where it says Newton's Law of Motion Science Challenge. The first little um, pamphlet will say first law and then you want to write the definition in your words to help you remember what the first law is. You're going to draw your best interpretation of the first law. I did the egg challenge. And then at the bottom you're going to have written down design ideas for your rocket ship. If you were designing a rocket ship, what do you want to keep in mind? Think about uh, the surface of your rocket ship. We just looked at a whole bunch of surfaces in the terms of friction. So what kind of surface do you want your rocket ship to be made out of? Something with more friction or less friction? And what kind of resource would you want to use? Wood, yoga mats, that kind of thing. Now we finished our inertia experiment, our friction experiment, We've made our flip chart, and we've thought about our rocket ship that we're going to make in part four. Here is your bonus challenge. You're going to create an inertia tower. It's gonna to be a whole family affair, so anyone in your household that you're with, you're stuck with, even your stubborn siblings, maybe you can grab them to help you out. Here's my attempt, but I am by myself, so I don't really have other hands to help me. So we'll see how far I can get. This is basically like the egg experiment. I'm gonna have a cup. I'm gonna use a cup, something I could pull out, and I'm gonna stack things. So here's a simple version. Here's my first attempt at a tower. Let's see if I can make it go. I did pretty well. It's stacked. You could also make it so that it doesn't stack, but it stays where it is, like that. And I want to keep building. So now I'm going to try, now I know this part works. I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add more. And more. And then I'm going to try to pull these out as fast as I can and keep the tower. <laughs> but I'm only one person. So this challenge, you definitely need more hands. Because you can see, you can get higher and higher the more hands you have to help you pull. Good luck with your inertia tower. Make sure you get the action filmed and you submit it to us at Lowell Observatory in this link provided below.